Okay, perfect. So we should be recording and let me just get that screen up. Lost it in my tabs. <laughs> Too many tabs open. There we go. All right, so can you, you guys can see that? It's all perfect. Yes. All right, um, so I'm, I'm Rebecca. Um, Josh is with me too. We're both uh, second year law students at Western Law. Uh, and so as part of a pro bono project, we uh, were tasked with putting together a information kit uh, on wills and powers of attorney for lifespan. Uh, and so tonight we're just going to kind of give you an overview of some of that research and then answer any questions. About that. Uh, hopefully you guys had a chance to look at the larger uh, information kit that was sent along with the Zoom link. Uh, and then, yeah, we can answer specific questions. So I think Josh is then going to run over our uh, agenda. Awesome. So yeah, as Rebecca mentioned, we're both second year law students and we're really excited to be presenting uh, to you tonight. And, and we really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to come watch it and learn tonight. So um, as Rebecca mentioned, we're just going to go through uh, the will, what is it and, and why it's important, as well as the two powers of attorney, um, financial and medical. So just moving on to our next slide, um, we do just have to give this disclaimer. We are just second year law students. Hopefully in about two years time, we'll be done law school and all licensed and be uh, true lawyers, but everything we are telling you tonight is just legal information and we're not uh, lawyers yet, so we can't give you any specific advice. So we just want to advise you to, when you do put kind of these documents together, if you choose to do so after, after this session uh, to seek the advice of an actual lawyer. Uh, and then just as a little bit of an introduction, um, we want to let you know that more than 50% of Canadians don't have a will. so. Uh, just being here tonight is uh, puts you ahead of 50% of Canadians. So thank you again for tuning in. Um, and we'll explain in a little bit why these documents are so important um, for your future. Um, so all Rebecca and I are mostly going to touch on about the documents tonight is just what they are and why they're important. The uh, information kit that we've put together is about 40 pages in length. So it goes into detail um, about various kind of scenarios and, and things you want to keep in mind uh, with the documents, but we're just going to kind of cover the broad bases tonight. So uh, in terms of what a will is, it's a written document uh, that a person known as a testator uses to distribute what they own upon their death. So you are that person uh, who will be kind of deciding uh, how to distribute what you own. Um, and it's important to know that this document only comes into effect once. Uh, the person who's made, who made it has died. So in terms of why you should make a will, um, there's really two main reasons that we touch on in our information kit um, that creating a will allows you to do. So the first is to distribute your assets, uh, being all your belongings and your different financial property or accounts that you may have in, in the way that you want to and a way of your choosing. So if you don't have a will, there's certain um, kind of statutes and, and laws that set out different rules as to how your uh, belongings will be distributed. Um, so this depends um, and gives certain amounts to your spouse, your common law partner, um, as well as your children. So that's the number one um, kind of pro of creating your own will. And secondly, um, you also get to choose an executor, which is the person who carries out and, and executes the terms that you put within your will. Um, so <laughs> Those are the two main things. And I guess the, the one constant throughout all of the documents is that um, making them in advance will make the process easier um, to transfer kind of your assets. Uh, and it'll also cut a lot of expenses um, that you would have when you're going through the court. So um, those are the two main pros. Perfect. And so I'm gonna give you kind of the overview of attorney. Um, and so I, I imagine everyone kind of knows what a will is sort of that but powers of attorney are something that I wasn't familiar with a few years ago. Um, and a lot of people aren't, but I think they're also very important. So the difference between a power of attorney, both the property and the uh, medical one 
And uh, the, the difference between that and a will is that powers of attorney actually come into effect while you're still alive. Uh, so they kind of dictate who can make decisions for you when you're incapacitated or can't make those decisions for yourself. So the first one is the uh, power of attorney for property. This is your kind of financial power of attorney. And so this is a written document where one person who's the grantor or the donor will give another person who they call in the document, the attorney or the grantee, uh, they give them legal authority to act on their behalf with respect to property. And what's important to note here is property, it's not just real estate or land, like we would traditionally think about it. It's property in the legal context, which is actually all of your financial assets, possessions, and also real estate. So this can be um, bank accounts you own, your car, things like that. And so why should you make a uh, power of attorney for property? So this uh, allows you to make sure you get to choose someone that you know that you trust to make these decisions about your property when you're not able to. And without a power of attorney for property, your family might have to hire a lawyer to get a guardian appointed by a judge. And this going through that system is costly, time consuming. And so if you appoint an attorney for property, this will allow them to do things like enter your house, you can pay your bills, deal with your old age security, Canada pension, and all this when you're not able to make those decisions for yourself for whatever reason. Similarly, we have the power of attorney for personal care, which is sometimes referred to as your medical power of attorney. So this, like the property one, is a written document where one person gives authority to another person. In this case, it's for that person to make decisions about the donor's personal care. So this can be things like healthcare, nutrition, hygiene, clothing, living arrangements, social services. So anything that kind of has to do with your personal care. So why should you make this? So again, like the property one, this allows you to name a person that you want to make the personal care decisions for you. And this is even more so than property. This is deciding who's gonna look, make these intimate decisions for you. And so that means you can pick someone that you truly trust and someone that you know will respect your wishes. And without this, there's a fixed priority. If you ever end up in the hospital, um, there's a fixed priority of who can make decisions for you. So for example, your spouse will have priority over any children you have to make those decisions. Uh, if you're not in the hospital, your family, again, will likely have to hire a lawyer and have a judge appoint a guardian to make those personal care decisions for you, which again is expensive and time consuming. So those are kind of the, the overview of our wills and powers of attorney. Um, so we have here listed some additional resources. So we have the uh, LSO Legal Society of Ontario Referral Service, and you can see they have a little link on the screen there. Uh, so it, through this, Ontario residents can obtain a free 30-minute legal referral. And then there's also something uh, called the Free Wills Month. And so this, it uh, brings together some charities who offer people aged 55 or over uh, the opportunity to have simple wills written uh, without charge. And so this, they, the last one in Ontario ran in October, 2020. Um, I checked the website just today and they haven't said officially if they're doing one in 2021, uh, but they're hoping to because their one in October of last year was so successful. And so you can keep your eyes peeled and uh, that's the website there. Uh, that's just something you can keep in mind to get a, a free simple will drafted up. So now uh, we'll move into our questions and answers period. Um, so you guys, since there's only two of you, you can just unmute yourself and I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Perfect. Okay, so uh, if you guys have any questions, you can. Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, it's my understanding, or I heard uh, from a neighbor that you could actually have a document um, or work with an insurance company and it's to designate 
where you want your property to go to. And it's less cumbersome. It doesn't require the courts. And, and, and that sounds very, un, it doesn't sound very specific. Does any of that make sense to you? Or um, you I guess that? I can take that question. Ahead, um, so we, we were, yeah, we worked with a, a supervising lawyer and we went through kind of the legal material and other things. So I don't think that Rebecca or I came across that avenue ourselves. I know we did kind of look at how life insurance um, and different insurance policies work their way into a will. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that we have any knowledge about uh, kind of using no this worries. other system. Yeah. No worries. I was just looking for something um, less cumbersome or complicated or anyway. For no sure. worries. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, as uh, Josh mentioned, there is there are certain things like life insurance policies and anything where you can name a specific beneficiary, which don't get, you don't need to go through the process of the will at all. It kind of bypasses that. So there right. are something, but yeah, overall, like a, the uh, going through insurance companies. I haven't heard of that, but maybe. <laughs> okay, thanks. And I, just to clarify, does that, so you're saying that um, a life insurance policy isn't required to be a part of the will? It's its own separate thing? Yeah, true? so it won't get tied into your um, your estate, okay. so it kind of bypasses that. So you don't need your execute uh, your executor to distribute that because it's got the name's beneficiary. Okay. Um, the other item was uh, any joint accounts. So if you have joint bank accounts, anything like that, um, when you die, it'll go to the other person who's named jointly. It won't get tied up in the will. And you can still put it in the will if you want, but uh, it's not necessary. Yeah, I mean, you can put it in so that people kind of know what you have, but yeah, it's not not needed. So, sorry. Um, so with the life insurance, with the claim itself, I assume, not that I know, but I'm assuming that the beneficiary is the most detail that gets put into that. So would it be effective to include it in the will as to how you want it? spent or distributed like I have my son so it he will ultimately be a beneficiary but if I go before he's of age to spend it how he wishes it would probably be pretty important to put it in my will how I would want that to get dealt with right um for sure I guess I can take the first crack at it so in terms of basically in this situation your executor so the person who's carrying out your Will would serve as in essence like a trustee if you were to kind of pass before your child were to reach the age of majority. So they would um, have like a fiduciary duty to look after uh, the life insurance or any other thing that's assigned to your child until they do reach that age. Um, and you can also put in different specifications like uh, releasing the money at different times. So it's not just like they would get it as soon as they turn 18 or something like that. You can um, kind of set predetermined things that you want. So. Okay. Um, it would be good to include that, yeah. Okay, good to know, thanks. Yeah, and when you set something up um, for trust and stuff too, I know I've seen a few different wills where it, you can specify the age. So some they'll have it um, in trust until the person's 21, some decide 25, 18. So you can kind of put in your preference with that when you uh, put it like in the, the trust clause. Are there any more general questions before I uh, stop the recording? That's it for me. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you for those questions, guys, and uh, for listening to our, our little spiel. So thank you.